G'day Internet and welcome back to another video. So this episode was actually going to be kind of a whole one, uh, but this is actually going to be episode 2.1 uh, because the two main subjects I wanted to cover today, uh, by the time I finished editing the footage for each of them, ended up being about 20 to 30 minutes just on the work. So I'm going to split it up, and today we're going to mainly concentrate on our poor old broken case. Uh, if you remember in the last video, it's got a whole bunch of broken tabs and clips and all that kind of stuff. Um, so let's start by fixing that. So these case repairs, right, let's take a look what we've got going on. On the bottom half, uh, it's actually not too bad. We've got uh, a missing standoff up here, uh, and both the tops of these, uh, where the screws come in, have been snapped off. Uh, but we have some 3D printed parts. We've got a replacement standoff here, uh, and also these that I very quickly designed, all they are is a, I think they're 14 mil with a four mil hole and about two or three mil thick. Um, and they can get glued on there. Uh, so that's part of it. And if we take a look at the top case, uh, we've got a bit of a crack here. I'll try and repair. Um, but the main thing with this is the hooks at the back are missing. So we have some of these that have also been 3D printed. I'll put links to the Thingiverse stuff. Um, the downside of these is these are designed for the cases where this here is all filled in. And mine aren't. Mine have, are just on kind of like two rails. So the only way I can actually glue these in is just on top of those two rails, which isn't going to be that strong, uh, but we'll simply have to see how we go. Right, where should we start? Let's start with the bottom half. Now, this is already snapped straight off. Um, so that should just be a case of gluing straight in there. What I am going to do, however, is I'm going to rub this on some sandpaper just to s give the base of it uh, some consistency because it is 3D printed and also some roughness. So that's that. Uh, and I'm also going to take a little bit of this sandpaper and I'm going to sand the area around this. Um, just to give it some roughness as well, I'm then going to give that a clean with some isopropyl um, just to make sure all the dust and any contaminants uh, miss, uh, gone. Uh, and I'll give that a wipe as well. And we're going to use some Loctite plastic glue, super glue, which comes with uh, the extra stuff that you put on. What's this stuff actually called? Activator. So what we'll do is we will just make sure I've actually got some coming out of this. I do. Let's put on some activator there. And also on here. Uh, that needs to sit for 30 seconds or so, uh, which gives me the opportunity to argue with the lid on this. Come on. Right, and that looks good. And we should be able to simply put some of this glue around the old, where the standoff was. Put the lid on that before I forget. And this should we line it up with the old hole and press down. And that's pretty good. That's quite solid. Now, the 
standoffs for the front here, luckily they've actually snapped off fairly flat. But what I am going to do, if you give me a minute, I'm going to get a file. And I'm going to take this little file here and I'm just going to work down the top surface so it's as flat as we can possibly have it. Because obviously the flatter the surface, the more surface area we've got for the glue to work. Alright, that's not so bad. Now I'm going to again give these a quick clean to remove any contaminants. And find our sandpaper, take these discs and rough the surface up. And once again, we will take our activator and paint around the top edge that we're going to glue against. Uh, let's do one at a time, I think. And same here. And take our glue and very carefully run it around this top edge. And we we'll remember what the smooth side is. Place this carefully and as centered as we can on top and press, whoop, moved down. So like I said, this one moved, uh, but I've used a round needle file just to elongate the hole and kind of bring it centered again. Um, there is a couple of other little bits broken at the bottom here. We've got a broken vent uh, and we've got this little bit here. Now to fix these, I'm going to do something a little different. So for this here, which I've just pushed back into place and this little bit here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to use some zip ties. And as a motorcyclist or kind of ex-motorcyclist, Zip ties are my friend. So what we're actually going to do, now if you know zip ties, you know there's the rough side uh, that hooks into the end, but there's all, usually a small back side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a length, uh, a bit like that. And you can probably see where I'm going with this. We're going to sand this to give it some roughness. And we're going to sand the back of this to give it some roughness, something for the glue to bond to. Right, once again, Clean to give it, get rid of some contamin any contaminants, and we're basically going to just do the same thing. We're going to take our activator. We're going to put some on the surface. We're going to put some on the glue side of our bit of zip tie. And whoop, that was a bit drippy. 
we're going to lay some carefully down here hopefully not too much so it then leaks through now this bit of zip tie is actually wider than this but honestly you're not going to see it um, from the outside line this up as best as I can over that crack and push down And that gives it a bit of reinforcement and you can, can't really see it from the other side. If I wanted to, I guess I could run around with a uh, knife and trim it a little. And then we're gonna do the same here. So I need quite a bit here because there's a lot of it broken. I'm gonna want it from about there to about there. which is essentially the same thing, just a little bit more of it. Uh, let's sand this. And this is, is gonna be tricky because we don't wanna to put too much pressure on it to simply snap it off while we're trying to sand. Let's just do the best you can. All right, clean. Clean, clean, give that isopropyl a chance to evaporate and um, activator. Activator, make sure we get it on the loose part as well as the actual case. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lean this up here and probably get my head in the way. Come on, stay. You're right. Eh. Right. What we're going to do is take our glue and carefully apply it the whole length of the crack and then probably a bit more. Remember this is all inside so it doesn't have to be the neatest job in the world and we're going to carefully place this bit of zip tie down so it goes over the actual crack and give it some pre uh, it moved quick before it sets and Kind of do our best to hold it in place with a bit of pressure. And that's pretty good. Look at that. Zip tie solve all. So that's pretty much the base um, done. Uh, all right, we can put that to one side and grab the top lid. Uh, we do actually have a standoff here that's broken. I didn't 3D print a replacement bit because there's actually enough depth there for a screw to still bite, so I'm not too concerned. Now, for these clips to work, these actually have to be trimmed off flat. So I'm sorry, just gonna have to get you flat so you don't stick up above the back edge. Right, and this is kind of a case of wash rinse repeat again and we're going to use these three here and we just keep doing the same thing we find that little bit of sandpaper i've been using i'll tear off a new bit and now remember we're only going to be sticking to these raised bits here so well Give these a sand to add some roughness. Uh, 
and sand at least the outside edges of these as best we can because they're obviously the bits that are going to be making contact. Right, now taking a quick look at these, you'll see that there's a ridge here. This ridge needs to line up with the top edge of the case, which is here, which is this bit just here. Uh, so that will sit roughly like that, if that makes sense. We will uh, use our activator and paint it on these edges that we're going to be gluing to. And also the edges of our parts. And not forgetting to put the lid on. You'll excuse me while I'm kind of quiet for a moment because I do actually have to concentrate on this. So what I want to do is I just want to put the glue on these ridges. And once that's there, I now need to make sure that it's lined up square on those ridges and also as flush as I can get it because it keeps wanting to turn there right downward pressure I'm going to put them on and I think I might actually reinforce these edges on either side with some glue and uh, baking soda but let's get the rest of them in first Okay, so they're in. We're gonna use some baking soda, bicarb, whatever. And we're gonna use it to reinforce down each side. So what this requires doing is, helps to actually tip out a bit, so you don't make a massive mess, although this is gonna get messy, is take some glue. This is essentially super glue, by the way. Run a very liberal amount down here and then very quickly tip and pack on baking the baking soda see that's already cracked shake it out and that has already created a very strong bond we'll now do the other side which just already cracked. Liberal amounts of, quickly get the bicarb on there, pack it on, hope it doesn't stick to your fingers, and tap it out, and that's not too bad. I'm gonna just put a bit more at this end. Right. And now I will do the other three. That kind of shows you how much uh, gets just dropped out of the way. Okay, so like I said, it's not the neatest thing in the world, but I'm going for functional over neat. Um, I would suggest that if you do have a case like this that's only got the ridges and it's not solid, uh, that you are careful with it even in the long run. Um, these have still got a bit of flex to them. Um, so just be mindful that the clips have been repaired. Don't just go reefing the thing apart and then go, oh, the clip's broke.
So after all that kind of sanding and gluing and clipping and all that kind of stuff, we now actually have a case that holds together. Uh, and also, thanks to Mark from the Retro Channel, I finally have a working 1541. So between all this and my 1701 monitor, it's starting to look quite good. Now, in the next video, we're going to tackle uh, probably one of the biggest problems for Commodore 64s, and that's power supply. Uh, because I've been a naughty boy uh, and have been using just the standard power supply uh, for this whole time, so I should probably do something about it. So if you're interested in that, uh, keep your eye out for the next one. Uh, it should be out probably in the next day or so, because I've actually already shot most of the footage. Uh, and if you like this, uh, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.